We began a road trip about three, four weeks ago, and we are going to be wrapping it up today. We've been on the road with Jesus. Road trips are a powerful thing in life. They, uh, one, they're just a lot of fun, uh, but uh, they also have this uh, transformative kind of experience about them. You don't go on an extended uh, a road trip and uh, not come away kind of a bit changed, learning a little bit more about yourself, maybe about someone else. That is the unique thing about the, the road trip. And so Jesus was on a road trip, the ultimate road trip, at the point in his ministry when his disciples finally answered the question, who do you say that I am? And Peter and the rest say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. We got a little bit of ringing up here and I'm already married. So <laughs> these are the jokes, right? All right. Um, where was I? <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, they were saying, yeah, yeah, I know now. Okay, so they were saying that uh, Christ, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, that's the pinnacle. That's everything that he's been kind of working up to. It's at that moment that Jesus, it says, set his face towards Jerusalem for his final road trip. He was going to Jerusalem for Passover to be sacrificed on a cross and for Easter. And he began to tell his disciples this. This is what I'm about. This isn't going to be a tragedy. This isn't going to be a mistake. This is the plan. No one takes my life from me, but I freely lay it down of my own accord. This is the Father's plan. He is obedient to the Father, even to death on a cross. And so we've joined Jesus on this road trip, this ultimate road trip, and I've been looking at different characters that he's been interacting with and learning a little bit about Jesus, learning a little about them, learning a little bit about us and what that means. And so that trip culminates in him coming to Jerusalem, being handed over, betrayed, nailed to a cross. On Friday, he died. And then it says in Luke 24, on the first day of the week, for them, that's Sunday, Sunday morning, that the women went to the tomb to uh, put spices on the body, to, to finish the, the, the burial preparations. But when they got to the tomb, there was nothing but the linens right there. And they were gasped. They, they were wondering where the body went until another body appeared and a body of an angel sitting on a stone all in its glory, bright shining, saying, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here for he is risen. Pretty fantastic. How many of you seen an angel sitting on a rock? I, I haven't seen. Except for the first time I met Eileen. <laughs> you you, you got to take them when you, when you ask. Somebody please tell her because she's downstairs. Yeah. She, oh, there you go. There you go. I saw an angel. Um, pretty fantastic, right? I mean... And it overwhelms these ladies. They're just kind of ecstatic because not only the news, the, the how the message has come along. I mean, how could you just simply not believe that? I mean, it's something incredible, fantastical. But most of us, we don't have that type of experience. We don't see angels. We weren't there. Well, these ladies get all in a, in a, in a, into a state and they are sent off. They run to back to the disciples the, the group of, uh, of, of followers that uh, are kind of holed up into a, into a place there after the crucifixion, and they, sh they show up, and they're like, oh, we saw an angel. It was incredible. There's a body. Jesus is alive, and it's so great. And I can't believe it. Uh, and the men went with this statement of belief. They went, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. We haven't gone very far in 2,000 years. <laughs> now, 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 what I mean by that, the guys still didn't listen to the ladies 2,000 years ago, right? They've got the most incredible story, the most incredible message, and the best that they can come up with they don't believe. I mean, these are the people that followed Jesus around for three years. Eh, it's a bunch of nonsense. Well, I'm here to tell you today that they're right. This is nonsense. 
It is a fantastical story. It, it is beyond sense. See, we have to get past our 20th, 21st century arrogance that makes us go, well, we're the smart people, we're the scientific people, we know how things work. Those dumb peasants 2,000 years ago thought dead people pull, popped out of the ground like Punxsutawney Phil. No, they didn't. This was nonsense to them. When you get nailed to the cross because the Romans perfected this, there was only one outcome. That person isn't coming back. You better say your goodbyes. They're done for. And for someone to show up and go, he's alive after two days, after that brutal beating and death? Nonsense. Exactly. It's an incredible story to think. And that's the point. Because if this is true, it changes everything. Right? Now, you might be at that place with this whole kind of Jesus and, and Christianity and faith and go, I don't know if I quite buy into all this. It seems like a lot of gibberish to me. You know, it's kind of nice that you have some rules of being nice to one another, but believing this stuff? Come on. I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't need that. I don't buy into it. Here we got the disciples, the guys that followed him around for three years, saying as much that it's nonsense. Maybe you're just kind of going, I have way too many questions to simply uh, agree with this and buy it wholesale. Maybe you're there. Well, eventually, one kind of pokes themselves up out of this group. Peter, he's always getting himself into trouble. He goes, I will not believe the ladies unless I see it for myself. And so he leaves. He runs. He goes to the tomb. And he pokes his head inside. And guess what he finds? Exactly what the lady said. How about that? Now, did he have faith? Did he go, they're right, they're true? No, he went away wondering, what am I supposed to do with this? So you can be one of those people that go, I'm not going to listen to what somebody else says. I don't care what Pastor Noel says. I don't know. I don't care how good his jokes are. I'm not going to believe it for him because he says it. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> <sighs> Got to have one. Um, you know, I want to inspect this for myself. That's what Peter does. He goes, but he's not convinced. He's left wondering. He, he goes, something has happened. I agree. You know, there's no body here. I didn't meet Jesus. Something has changed. I'm wondering, but I'm not yet convinced. That could be kind of where you're at, of going, maybe there is something to this stuff, but you know what? I got more questions than I have answers, and I'm really just kind of left wondering what to do with it all. And I'm not quite yet ready to buy it wholesale. Just kind of wondering what's happening. And so this is all kind of a setup to a story. This hasn't been a, a road trip, but there is a story of another road trip. It says that on the same day, on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now that doesn't look like too fantastic of a, of a verse. I mean, it's just kind of, right, you know, just is giving you basic information, but it is saying volumes. Now, we know who these two people are. They're two people out of the group that uh, the disciples were hanging out with. So when it says the ladies went to report back, it said they, they told this to the 11. You know, the 11 disciples, Judas got voted out as the wink wink. Yeah, that. And the others. So there was like, there was a crowd of people that were kind of dedicated followers of Jesus that were hanging out. Well, two of them are now headed back home. They are leaving Jerusalem. Now get this. Jesus died Friday afternoon. They are going to say, they're going to mention that we got the report from the ladies. So they hung around at least till Sunday morning. They were so convinced of the report, and by Peter, Peter's wonderful uh, uh, testimony, that they went, by sometime Sunday afternoon, that's it. It's time to go home. It's time to wrap this thing up. It's over. 
And so they head back home. See, they're not on just a road home or a road to a town called Emmaus. They are on a road of disappointment. They're on a road of dejection. They are on a road of saying, we tried this, we bought the t-shirt, and now it's time to give up. He's not coming back. Now we don't even have a body, for crying out loud. We don't know what to do with this. It's time to give up and go home. That's, that's the power of this one line. Two of them left and gave up. Maybe you have been on that road where you went, you know what, I kind of started believing, I kind of started grabbing onto this, but at some point along the line, it fell apart. And you just kind of backed away, and you went, man, this isn't working out. This isn't what I thought it was. This isn't going where I want it to be. And now I have to go back. I have to go back to a life that, you know, I don't know how to make sense of that. I thought I was going on this, this direction, but now I'm just returning home and it's going to be life as usual. These two are done with faith to a certain extent. And I've seen that in lots of people. They just kind of get so far and they're like, Something happens. They have a bad experience. They, they, they get betrayed. They, they have life go off the rails, and suddenly, man, I, I thought this was going to result in something more. In one of the most beautiful images that we have, you have these two having give up, given up. They're on the road, and that's when Luke records and says, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them how about it the two people that are bailing out on jesus the two people that after jesus has taken this beating and gone through this torture and sacrificed his life the two that have walked away from that and said forget this this isn't worth it anymore jesus caught up to them and walked along with them He's not catching up to berate them, to tell them they're out of the club, that's it. They didn't have the fortitude to stick around, that's it. I need people that are, are, are all in here. It's, he's just come to walk alongside of them. Now, they don't recognize him. They don't not only not recognize him, it, it says that they're kept from recognizing him. Now, some people kind of go, well, in a natural sense, maybe it's just kind of their... Their grief has overwhelmed them. They're not just quite putting two and two together. And, you know, they're not expecting to like have a dead guy catch up to them and walk alongside of them. So they don't even have a category for Jesus walking along on this road trip. But there's also this idea that you know God or Jesus is, is active here of going, just kind of holding them at bay so that they don't get this full picture. Don't quite know why. But he could make this really easy for them. He could just kind of, you know, take off the mask and go, look, I'm alive. You don't have to be sorry you sad anymore. You don't, have to, you don't have to be worried about this at all. He keeps himself hidden from them. And so he asks, he says, what are you talking about? And they've been talking about the things that, at the, in, in Jerusalem. And the story actually says they, they stood still. They stopped and their faces were downcast. And they said, what's the matter with you? Are you and Pastor Noel the only one without a Facebook feed? This thing's all over. Check your Twitter. Everybody knows what has happened to this character here. Everybody knows what's been going on. How can you be in the dark about this? He's like, what are you talking about? And they say, it's about Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, he was handed over and crucified. But he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. They had faith, they, they, man, they bought into this. But the key line as they go on to describe this is, we had hoped. We had hoped he was going to be the one. Ever since I've been a teenager, I have known people 
along my faith journey that have come so far and then hit a spot where it doesn't make sense anymore. Where they go, something has been taken away from me. Something has happened that prevents me from continuing any further. I had hoped that this was going to turn out right. I really did want this to work. I really did want to believe, but now I cannot. He was a great prophet, powerful indeed, but now he is gone. He is dead and he is not coming back. They lay their hearts bare before Jesus, even though they don't know it's him. Maybe maybe you've been there too. Maybe you're there now. I, I, I really wish this would have worked. I really wish my faith was stronger, but I, I just don't see how it can work anymore. It's been broken. It's been cut off. And now I'm just kind of in that place of trying to figure out where to go from here. We've been in those moments. There are powerful moments in our life where, you know, we kind of, it's, it's not just a, a diversion. It's not just a, a, a slight change of the plan. It's when how we have thought of our life, the direction that we're going, gets completely dismantled. You know, whether somebody has done it to us, we've done it to ourselves. It's when you sit in your car and you stare out the window for about an hour and time slows to a crawl because your mind and your heart has to kind of catch up with going, what do I do now? How do I make sense of my reality? We had hoped that this would work. Jesus, you wish at that moment, had then pulled off the mask and said, hey, buck up, guys. It's okay. I'm alive. It's all good. He still does not pull back and or he doesn't he doesn't pull them back from their from their uh, from their grief. Instead, he does something else. He goes into instruction mode. It says as they're traveling, he began with Moses and all the prophets. He goes all the way back to the Old Testament. This is the Bible for these guys. And he starts working right from the very beginning. And he starts to explain to them what the scriptures have said concerning himself and his mission and what God's plan has always been. This was not a mistake. It wasn't a tragedy. It was the plan. You would think that God would be more interested into just kind of the quick conversion here, right? Why doesn't he just reveal himself and get this thing done and over with? You know, haven't you ever asked that question? You know, of all the people that don't believe or say I have questions, why doesn't God just kind of peel back the clouds, stick his head through there and go, hi, everybody, you know, it would settle the whole thing, right? Everybody would believe then. The quick and easy solution. Jesus doesn't do that here. Instead, he engages their mind. He engages the kernel of faith that they have. And he begins to show them what God has always been about. You don't think there's a plan. You have given up on the plan, but God has always had his plan, and it's still on course. See, for them to come to that place where they can embrace, their, their faith can believe again, there's, there's got to be a, a convincing of the mind here. Not just this overcome of experience, having an angel sit on a rock. Sometimes God goes, you got to get your thinking straight and understand what I am doing and what I'm all about. And that's what he does here. He just lays out everything that God has said. And their response is pretty incredible. They reflect on this later, and they go, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? As, as he talked about God's plan, it struck that chord in them of going, We thought it was dead. We had hope. We were going to shut the door to this. But this started reviving faith in our hearts. We heard what God was doing. It stirred us. 
We have experiences like that. Old church would have gone, called it unction, you know, when you're sitting there and the preacher's kind of thundering away and you're like, I, got, I think I'm supposed to respond, but I don't want to respond, but I really need to respond. You feel just kind of God working on your heart. That's right where these, these, these people are at. Our hearts burned in us. It was reviving. So are they there? Have, 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 you know, do they have faith? With this experience, the spiritual ecstasy of going, wow, something lit us back on fire. We get to an interesting part of the story. So Jesus has been sharing scripture with them. They're having a spiritual reaction to this. And then they arrive at the house. Now you'd think Jesus goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to close the deal here, right? I'm going to bring this thing home. Instead, the story goes, Jesus continued walking as though he was going to continue on without them. Without having revealed himself, just have taught them out of the scriptures, that's it. What in the world is Jesus doing here? Would Jesus allow us to just let him pass on by? It seems so. Remember back at the rich ruler? He asked Jesus, what do I need to do? Go sell all you have, then come follow me. And the man walked away sad because he had too many things. And Jesus lets him walk away. See, God's version of faith is not where I cram it down your throat, where I force you to believe. I invite you to to believe i walk alongside of you in your doubt and your confusion and and your and your uh, difficulties i'm going to show you what god's about but there's always a place with god where a choice needs to be made the rich young ruler had to choose do i follow jesus or do i follow my stuff bartimaeus does he sit by the road stay in a blind guy or does he get healed and start following along with jesus zacchaeus come down out of your tree and leave your life of crime and follow me there is a choice here and so the two urge jesus to stay it's getting late come stay with us don't continue in the dark be with us there's something happening here Our faith is not just a spiritual experience, but a choice where we say, God, I want you more in my life. I may not get it all. I might not have all the answers. I don't have it all figured out, but I want more of you in my life. We've got to have that choice. And in making that choice, it makes all the difference of the story. Jesus agrees. He comes into the house and says it was about time for dinner And so they sat at the table, and being kind of a guest of honor, they handed him the bread, and it says that Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he began to hand it to them. And then suddenly, their eyes were opened, and they knew it was Jesus. What is going on here? I mean, that's some incredible bread. Now, some people go, well, you know, that looks like communion. You know, it has the kind of that, that ritual with it. Don't know that they were there in that last supper because it was just the disciples, but I'm sure they've heard the stories of it, of that last meal as they talked in those two days staying with the disciples. Maybe that sparked their memory. Some people go, because he rises up the bread, they were able to finally see his hands, and they saw the scars, and they go, those are only Jesus' scars, and they realized who it was. Or maybe it was, it was in the bread. Because in the breaking of the bread, Jesus said, this is my body. Broken for you. Laid out. Sacrificed for you. Broken that you might be made whole. And then the story and the depth of that story told in just the breaking of the bread, they understood their eyes were opened. See, this journey of belief is going to take all the parts of us. It's not one thing. It's not a formula. It's not a mystery to be solved. It takes your mind. It takes your heart and emotion. It takes your will to choose 
But there is a spiritual dynamic here where God opens your eyes. He offers himself to us if we're willing to see. If we say, I want more of you in my life. Be here. And in a way that we don't control, we can't manipulate Jesus, makes himself seen by us. This is a powerful moment, folks. Don't mistake it. They don't go, wow, that's really neat. Glad you stopped by, Jesus. They understand this changes everything. He is alive. Everything we had hoped for is true. He is alive. And we're not just to continue on. And so they immediately, they don't wait till the next day. It's evening time. They, they run back to Jerusalem in the nighttime, retracing their steps. They come back into uh, the, the 12 or to the 11 and all the others going, we just seen Jesus. And they go, yeah, we, we did too. It's all true. We have belief. We have faith. It is true. It's true not only because we've seen evidences, not only true because he's shown himself to us, but it's true because he is real. He gives himself to us. He comes alongside of us in the road of doubt, the road of questions, not to scold us, but to invite us to come home. To believe and say, God has a plan. He has always had the plan. We're on track here. It may not look like it. You might be confused by it, but don't worry. God's got this thing. And really, that's what this road trip has all been about from the start. Who do you say that I am? Who am I? Am I just a really good guy? Am I a really smart guy? Or am I the one that is broken for you and made alive to make you alive with me? That's our faith, folks. That's what I bank my whole life on. It's true. It's absolutely true. On the back of your connection card, I, I kind of lay out a couple different responses here for no matter where you're kind of at. But I want to focus in on the last one of going, maybe today you've never taken that step at all of going, you know what, you know, I might have kind of gone to church, I kind of know about Jesus, I kind of know about the Bible, but I haven't come to a place where I go, this is true. I really believe. I, I want him in my life. And so today could be your day if you're ready. And if it is, I want you to pray along with me. Let's, let's pray here. Jesus, I need you. I don't have this figured out. I got a lot of things that I have wrong, but I confess that you are real. And I need you. Jesus, you have given yourself for me, and I accept your forgiveness. I want your healing in my life. Be the leader of my life from this day forward. Amen.